The forearms are one of those oft-neglected muscles like the calves or even the neck that can make a big difference in terms of how complete your physique looks. Many bodybuilders and trainers suggest that there's no need to train the forearms directly if you do heavy, grip-intensive barbell exercises, like deadlifts and rows, while other bodybuilders have offered more alternative training advice. Young kids, young guys, if you masturbate, that's enough. Not many trainees realize just how complex the forearm is, with roughly 20 different muscles functioning between the elbow and wrist joint. The forearm is split into anterior, or front, and posterior, or back, compartments. The anterior muscles perform flexion of the wrist and phalanges, or fingers, while the posterior muscles perform wrist and finger extension. Not many people realize the muscles that move the fingers are actually located in the forearm, and operate the fingers via long tendons like a puppet by strings, so that the fingers can remain more slender for handling precise tasks. This is why grip-intensive exercises like farmer's walks are effective for the forearms, even though they don't take the wrist joint through flexion or extension. The anterior muscles are contracting isometrically to keep the fingers flexed, or fists clenched. About five of the 20 muscles perform elbow flexion, like curling, and pronation of the forearm. Of these, we'll just focus on the most prominent brachioradialis muscle, which, unlike other prominent forearm muscles, such as the flexor digitorum superficialis, doesn't cross the wrist joint, meaning it can't be trained through wrist flexion or extension. According to a paper titled The Function of Brachioradialis, it's equally active in a neutral, supinated, and pronated position. And since the biceps are strongest when the forearm is supinated, or when the palms are facing up, it's best to perform curls with a pronated or reverse grip for the brachioradialis. Another paper from Murray and colleagues published in the Journal of Biomechanics found that peak torque for the brachioradialis occurred between 100 and 120 degrees of elbow flexion, while peak torque for the biceps was closer to 80 degrees. So performing partial reps in the top end range of motion might help target the brachioradialis over the biceps. So my top brachioradialis builder is the reverse grip barbell curl, finishing with partial reps in the top half of the range. Hammer curls are also a good exercise, but like most curls, will target the biceps to a large degree, and isn't as great for isolating the brachioradialis. A 2004 study looked at the effect of 12 weeks of forearm-specific training in high school baseball players. One group did a typical full-body, three-day-per-week training program, including grip-intensive exercises like Romanian deadlifts and bent rows. The other group did the exact same program, plus six forearm exercises, including wrist curls and extensions. After 12 weeks, forearm-specific strength was measured, and although only one measurement reached statistical significance, it's worth noting that every single strength measure showed a greater increase in the forearm training group. And given the tendency for strength gains to correlate with hypertrophy, with a longer duration study design, I'd expect to see hypertrophy differences as well. Although it's also worth noting that the resistance training only group still made significant strength gains in nearly every forearm strength task indicating that heavy compound movements can promote forearm gains without any direct forearm work, but may not be enough to optimize their growth. So if forearms are a weak point for you, adding in isolation exercises will help them grow faster. So what are the best forearm exercises? Well, you should include at least one wrist flexion and one wrist extension-based movement. My preferred choice for the former is the dumbbell wrist curl, with the forearm braced against a bench. And I prefer it to the barbell variation, which puts too much strain on my wrists. The two wrist extension-based movements I've favored in my own training are the bench-braced dumbbell extension and the standing dumbbell extension. Since the standing extension requires a good deal of grip strength and can be loaded more heavily, it's probably my number one for training the back of the forearm. A grip-focused movement should also be included, especially if you don't do a lot of heavy pulling. My favorite is the plate pinch, where you progressively add 10-pound plates to increase not only the weight, but the thickness as a form of double progression. Fat grips or similar equipment can be used to strengthen the grip as well, but I don't advise adding them to exercises you're already performing since they can detract from the load you're using for bigger body parts, and you don't want your back or shoulder work to suffer at the expense of improving forearm strength. Farmer's walks and heavy barbell holds are also effective, just keep in mind that they can lead to recovery issues if you don't correspondingly adjust workload for your traps and back. Volume recommendations will be individual, and I make them in my forearm training guide, but generally speaking I recommend aiming for 10 to 20 reps with relatively lower weights for both forearm curls and extensions, since heavier weights can lead to joint issues and might not maximally stimulate the smaller muscles of the forearm before the larger ones fatigue. Do two to three exercises per workout and two to three sets per exercise. These should be performed at the end of an upper body workout since you don't want your grip strength to suffer for that training session. And as part of your regular arm training, include a reverse grip curl at least once per week to target the brachioradialis. Research shows that when volume equated, training the forearms 10 times per week doesn't lead to better strength or size gains than three times per week. 
so more frequency isn't necessarily better. And given the high carryover from other exercises to the forearms, I think hitting them two to three times per week is sufficient. Like most muscle groups, consistency and progression reign king. So if there's an exercise that you enjoy and feel working your forearms well, be consistent with it two to three times a week. Don't be lazy and neglect your weak points. And as always, be patient with your results. What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for watching the video. I wanna quickly say thank you to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this video. Um, a lot of people will ask me about my beard and keeping it nice and tight and clean. So I was really excited when Dollar Shave Club reached out to me and I had first actually heard of them from Stephanie who uses their service and apparently the razors are also really good for shaving women's legs. Uh, but for me, I just like to clean up the neck and cheeks and for this Dollar Shave Club is the smarter choice because you'll get a great shave at a great price with high quality razors delivered right to your door. Meaning you'll never have to go shopping for blades in a store ever again, which just makes everything so convenient. So so for a limited time, you can get the executive razor with a tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5 for the first month with free shipping. And that's a $15 value for only five bucks. And after that, razors are just a few bucks a month. There are no commitments, no hassles, just high quality, sturdy razors delivered right to your door every month. So if you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash nippered, you can get the first month with the executive razor and Dr. Carver shave butter for just $5. So it's the first link down there in the description and that's dollarshaveclub.com slash nipper. So thanks again guys so much for watching. Um, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And Stephanie and I are actually in the process of moving. Uh, we're going from Tampa to Jacksonville, Florida. Um, so hence all the boxes in the apartment right now. Um, but if any of you guys happen to be from Jacksonville or maybe you've trained there, uh, let us know what gym we should go to, uh, what gym we should train at and just comment below and let us know. Uh, thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.